Hello everyone, this is Why Charts 101 with Nick Majuli, and today we're gonna to be talking about dynamic model portfolios. For those of you that have not used dynamic model portfolios before, you're in for a real treat. It's one of my favorite features in Why Charts. Um, what dynamic models portfolios allows you to do is to put in your own custom portfolio into Y Charts, so you don't just get to pick the tickers, but you get to pick the dates and the exact weights of your portfolio over time. And this is really helpful for two reasons. One, if you wanna analyze, for example, your own investment performance, I'm gonna get into that in a second. But also if you're like a, an advisor and you wanna use it with a client and you wanna show them, hey, here's how your portfolio did compared to um, something like the S&P 500 or another benchmark like a 60-40. So just to get started, I'm gonna share my screen here. I'm gonna show you guys where you can find uh, model portfolios in Y charts, and I'm gonna walk you through an example of how to actually do one. So. So within Y charts, if you ever go to tools, uh, model portfolios, just from your homepage, um, you'll have all your model portfolios in here if you've ever created any. Um, but what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna do create, and then instead of doing blank model portfolio, we're gonna do a dynamic model portfolio here. So that's gonna create it here. In this particular case, I'll just call this a 60-40 test, um, just to show you kind of how this would work. It's a very simple, um, portfolio that just, it's like a 60, 40 portfolio that rebalances annually. Now you can do this with just the other model portfolios, but because this one's dynamic, I want to, I'm going to make a little bit of a twist on it at the end. So I'll, I'll get into that in a second. Uh, your benchmark, we'll just use the S and P 500 here. Uh, here's an important thing. When you're doing a dynamic model portfolio, you want to set the rebalance frequency to never. And I'll explain why in a second. But, um, as I said, with this type of portfolio, you're going to be uploading your data. So the real, the key here is for me to talk about how you want to format your data so it gets in here and then we can go from there. So all you need in this case, I'm using an XLS X file, it's an Excel file. You can use a CSV, it doesn't really matter. Um, this is just called the weights over time. You just need three pieces of information in this exact order. You need your dates, you need your symbols, your ticker symbols and your target weight. So you wanna format them exactly like this. Um, just make sure they're named exactly like this, target space weight, symbol and date. And then all you do is you just create a data set that has every one of the symbols and the weight at a specific point in time. So for example, the beginning of 2016, we had a 60-40. This is the uh, Vanguard S&P 500 and this is the iShares you know, intermediate term uh, bond fund. And all you would do is you put in those weights at every period in time for your portfolio. So that in this example, we have a 60-40 that rebalances annually. Um, and then you're gonna load that in there. Now, the only difference between this portfolio and a traditional like you know, annual rebalance 60-40 is in this particular instance, let's say you know this is my portfolio. And in the middle of 2019, I said, you know what? I'm going all in on S&P 500. So I rebalance out of bonds. I go 100% into stock. So I put that, that weight goes to one. But then six months later, I go back to my target allocation. So. Once you have a weights file like this, all you have to do is just load it into uh, into your portfolio here. So I click here, click drop your file. Now, by the way, if you ever, so I have something called weights over time. Um, if you ever try to upload it and it and it says that the file's not in the correct format, it's because it's not in this format. So make sure it's in this format before you do it. So that's all you're gonna do. You're gonna upload it in there. You're gonna hit submit. Sorry about that. And then it'll now automatically put in the weights and the ticker and it's gonna put it in there for you. And then you just hit save. And at this point, um, it'll actually start calculating for you. I'm just gonna let it calculate for a second here. But what's what's really cool about this, so look, that was actually pretty quick. Um, so even less than 30 seconds. But now basically what what we have, once I click on this, it'll show me the, port, the, the performance of this portfolio compared to a benchmark. So this is this portfolio over time. I can click performance, it'll show some, um, cool performance metrics over, over a couple of years. So for example, this is the uh, S&P 500 um, return in orange and the 60-40 R test portfolio um, in purple here. You can see portfolio returns over the last five years. So we only about have about five years of data that I put in. Um, but more importantly, you can just click fundamental chart and you can also start comparing this with, uh, with any sort of portfolio or ticker you want. Um, and one of the cool things to even test that this is working, for example, if you remember, so let me start it in the beginning of 2019. So go January 1st, 2019. If you remember from our weights file here, remember it was a 60-40 at this point. So it, it was 60-40 here, but then by July 1st, it's 100% stock. So you can see, if I just look at the um, percent change, you can see they are behaving differently in the first half of 2019. Um, you can see that they're behaving obviously differently because the, you know, the 6040 obviously has some bonds, but now let's go to July 1st, 2019. And you'll see that they should basically behave identically at this point. And as you can see, they do. 
from this point forward, they're basically identical for six months because as I said in this file here, it went to 100% stocks. Um, but why I really like this is once you put in these weights, you can kind of exactly track an index more or less. And the other cool thing about it, one of the reasons why I use it. So I actually asked people on Twitter here, let me get that, um, that question up. I asked people on Twitter, let me see, you can see my, I said, do you know your lifetime investment performance? You know, what would your returns be aggregated across all accounts, positions, et cetera. Um, and 57% of people said, no, they didn't actually know their lifetime investment performance. So I thought that was uh, pretty interesting um, because, you know, a lot of people don't actually know their lifetime investment performance. But what's really cool is with, with dynamic model portfolios, I was able to take um, my my data that I, I've, I've like looked at allocation data over time and I just have it like saved in an Excel file. And I was able to take my own allocation data and just plug it into an Excel file just like that, upload it, and then create the Nick Majuli portfolio. So if we look back at that here, let me go back into here. So I go back to my model portfolios. And this is basically that portfolio, the Nick Majuli allocation over time. So I found it personally helpful for me because I was able to say like, Okay, how is my portfolio done compared, you know, let's say to the S and P five hundred? So I can look in here, and we can do that. But in addition, you could do the same thing with your portfolio of an advisor. So one way or another. So over the last year, for example, my portfolio is only is slightly beating um, a sixty forty, right? So I'm using a sixty forty. This is another model portfolio I created. I'm using that as a benchmark. My portfolio is beating the sixty forty just barely by about two percent over the last year. You see, actually, it it drew down worse um, during a you know, March, 2020, but it's since recovered. So those are some of the cool things you can do with model portfolios and why I recommend it because you can just put in your tickers, get your exact performance, easily compare it across time. And that's something that um, you're always gonna be able to have in the future, whether that's, as I said, whether it's for personal reasons or if you're an advisor using it with clients. And one of the uh, one of the other things you can do is saying, well, what if YCharts doesn't have one of the tickers that I'm looking for? Well, then they have something called custom securities where you can actually upload um, data straight into their program or into their database. And you can use that even in your model portfolio. So even if they don't have a ticker or a specific position that you happen to have an allocation to, you can upload that into their system and then use that. So hope you guys have found that helpful. Dynamic model portfolios. This is YCharts 101 with Nick Majuli.